to make this a topic but things have changed so quickly in the world of sneakers that i can't actually because they've actually it feels like finally listened to my concerns so i mentioned i think a few times on here that i feel like nike for the most part are extremely lazy um especially given their resources talent money factory manufacturing they should be making way more interesting shoes than they are at the moment but they don't right for the most part i think the last interesting shoe original shoe nike put out in my opinion has to be the fear of god um whatever shoes that he did what are they called uh nike fear or fear of god one okay it's so a fear of god one okay whatever this model shoe was i thought was incredibly fresh and a probably one of the freshest sort of like new shape collaborations that you do with people because i felt like it really sort of represented what the fear of god brand was in the sort of sportswear way without looking too crazy um i thought it was really well done from the last to the shape to the colorway that were put out like the marketing material around it i thought legitimately it was one of the better collaborations that they've done in a while and i think in my opinion it was maybe the last great sort of original shape they've ever put out since then because i feel like you know it feels like it's always a never-ending cycle of flipping retros when it comes to nike and the uh, reason why i'm talking about this is like fair enough if you're gonna make retros right fair enough make your retros keep bringing them back and back and again but if you're gonna do them do them correctly but they don't ever do them correctly they always make them halfway and then they give you this shoddy excuse of oh we've lost the last manufacturing is really difficult it costs a lot of money it's like bros you're a multi-billion dollar company you basically print money when you just sell air force ones alone you could basically you know sustain a small nation somewhere through the sales of air force ones alone right just a white pair not even a black pair just a white pair alone could sustain a whole entire country so this idea that they can't remake the last or whatever is just complete bs to me so they're addicted to the retros they don't make them to spec and then they sell them half heart like halfway done in the hope of selling them to sneakerheads and then they limit the availability of you be able to get them so you can't even buy the thing that they want you to buy only because it's only made for people like you don't care about you know and another air max or another color you're also going to care about that and they don't make it easy for you to purchase so it's just they take the piss i feel like in general with sneakerheads and i always said that i felt like adidas were always doing the best job when it comes to retros like when they do do a retro they actually tend to do like different versions they'll do like a gr version i'll get sold in like jd sports and whatnot and they'll also do a version that's going to be aimed specifically at sneakerheads and it's going to be made with the exact specifications of the og or vintage shoe that came out from before now it might be because they've got more people in the important positions who actually care about sneakers like actual sneakerheads and not just people who like fancy shoes or funky shoes i feel like that's a lot of you get that kind of energy from Nike. You get a lot of people who are like San Fran, you know, happy dappy, just, you know, happy with colors and shapes and whatnot, people, than actual sneaker fans. That's, I feel, that's what it feels like to me, but maybe I could be wrong. But this is a good example of why I think Adidas are doing a really good job of the retro. This is courtesy of Just for Kicks. Sorry, justfreshkicks.com. It says Adidas Originals to release the Forum 84 High with pre distressed details. And if you're, you know, unless you've been living under a brick, you'll know that Adidas has been going pretty aggressive with the forums, um, the highs, the lows. They've done them in skates now, whatnot. They're really pushing the shape. And, you know, I don't blame them because it's a really decent sneaker. I've been considering actually getting a pair for a while. I really like them. Sansa strap with the strap. I think it's a really good shape um, and a really good model overall. But they decided to go a step further because, again, the actual standard pair that they put out in this similar sort of colorway about the distressing is still to spec to me it looks amazing it's got the flat outsole it's got the great shape the materials look great like it looks quite close to the vintage pair i think especially because when you kind of compare it to pictures like you can't really tell the difference on naked eye but they've even decided to go a step further than what they've got in the in the kind of standard release that did well and also put on top of this stress look but for whatever reason nike can't get one retro right no like Adidas is making the same shoe four times and doing it to different levels and appealing to different demographics and again Nike can't do it once right to one demographic it's like it doesn't it boggles the mind um so that's it the distress one is coming out uh, date TBC sometime this year 
the dressing looks pretty decent on it right in terms of what it looks like and if you're into that kind of look you're going to snap them up if you're not you're not in it right even the sole's been yellowed they even it's, the lace has been stained a bit and the nylon tongue yeah that's pretty crazy the nylon foamy tongue so they went all the way through with it and they kind of delivered in a really big way i feel like well it looks like Nike have finally listened because again, I remember I mentioned it in another video that I feel like the retros in Nike are terrible. Um, a good example I used, I think at the time was the Nike MX-1, a kind of classic shoe that always gets kind of, you know, put through the meat grinder during an Air Max day, right? Um, you know, classic shoe that I felt like they could at least done one time to spec when it comes out the big window big bubble sort of air max one in terms of the shape and whatnot you know just looking at those vintage ones compared to that stock image you can tell which one looks the best right and i think it's these right for sure so i was wondering or thinking to myself like they keep retroing things and making them poorly the sneak industry is now not what it used to be when i was a kid it's actually a billion dollar industry now everyone and their mum knows about sneakers there's 15 year old kids making millions of dollars off of buying limited shoes and reselling them it's not a secret anymore so number one it feels like to me shoes should be easier to get and i don't feel like they are or if they are going to make them harder to get still they should be of better quality than they were beforehand because you know for sure people are going to buy them because there's more customers out there to buy these shoes it's not like how it was before you were only selling to maybe a million people every single year no you're selling to many many millions of people now every single year so you should be able to either make them more readily available or make them better quality than what they were previously or maybe to spec and they don't do that so i thought hey an easy win for them nike is like hey why don't you make a retro that actually is a bit more similar to the actual og in terms of shape in terms of just trying out the same color of shoes look at that that's a big window one so it's turning out the same color shoe in the same model the same as before and then trying to push out the sneakers again because i feel like it's unfair so i feel like you're exploiting the customer base and it feels like nike have finally woken up because they decided to do it with the jordan jordan one being the the first sort of shoe that they're going to put out and again i'm hoping it's not just i'm, I'm hoping it's not just stains because don't mistake yourself this 4 m 84 that i just showed you it's not just the scare stains and the scuffs that make it look whatever sorry it's not just the stains and the scuffs that make it look great it's the fact that they're actually to spec to considering in terms of shape when you compare them to the ogs and that's what i'm hoping nike or jordan brand does with this jordan one because if ever there was a model that they sort of like owe it to sneaker heads to give them to in this two spec model it's a jordan one jordan brand guys anywhere are like nintendo guys right they're they're flipping ride or die they're going to ride for that company regardless of what crap they make the poor materials the horrible releases the you know dog shit colorways they're gonna keep on pushing these guys even the newer models they make are terrible but the retros if they're gonna reward customers they should be rewarded on the Jordan ones because they keep buying these things and they you know it's like once you got one Jordan one you don't need any more than that but they still keep buying them so I feel like they owe it to those guys to at least give them one Jordan one that's done to spec that's got the right shape on them that looks more similar to what I've got here on the screen which is a an original Jordan one even the one I sold recently from the time that he first played blah 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 just give them one of these shoes come on those guys deserve at least one of these original Jordan ones done in this shape you know but of course some of that distressing done and, and there's no there's no excuse why they can't do it because they definitely have a pair of okay this is just a regular pair of jordans um they definitely have a pair of og jordan ones uh in the locker or in the factory somewhere that they can kind of pull out and just kind of you know uh deconstruct or reverse engineer and i think i mentioned it before on a pod as well that i don't accept their excuses because that they tell you they can't do it but yeah we're meant to believe that these um people that make reps in china are able to take a shoe brand new and kind of reverse engineer it sort of like take it apart and basically remake it again and sell it in different side of people i just don't believe that they can't do the same thing with jordan ones it's just impossible so it'd be great to see them do this similar and kind of make it to spec hopefully it's kind of you know the distressing is not just the only thing and it's actually made with the correct shape in mind i would love to see that I'm really going forward, but this is the article, Curse Your Sneaker News. This is the following.
high off uh, high on every sneakerhead's most wanted list is the return of the jordan chicago iteration of the air jordan one rumors have been flying around that jordan brand would revisit the colorway on a newer air jordan one 85 silhouette the brand's most exacting attempt at recreating the original aj1 mold while that has yet to be confirmed we've recently learned of something just as enticing that would do the timeless classic justice. Sources close to Sneaker News have provided information that the Air Jordan 1 with the same Chicago colorway will be releasing in the late 2022 with vintage hits and a shape similar with the original high of the 85. I remember, what was the other high 85? I think that was the one that all those um, Don C's that used to wear and Ian Connor and stuff. And let's see if I can see it. Ian Connor, Jordan 1. Remember, it was that off-white one everyone was buying for a while, the 85 Jordan that everyone loved. Um, where is this? Like the grey one that he wore back in the day. Do you remember what I'm talking about? It was like a grey one, like a Zen. I don't know what. I don't, I'm not really familiar with colorways when it comes to Jordan 1s. It might be like a Zen grey. Jordan 1, 85. Let's see if someone's got a pair here listed on there. No, I can't see it. I think he's wearing... Yeah, that's, that's an off-white dunks here. But if I can see it. Vintage Jordan one air jordan one um jordan one 85 white gray see if that comes up let's see if that comes up uh it's got it there yeah it's similar to this similar to this but it was like a og og one and it was crinkling and everyone was wearing it for a time there's a time everyone kept buying this shoe i mean it was a high as well was it a high let's see if it was a high I remember everyone had these they were crazy for a while but regardless anyway you know what i mean um if they're able to bring these back like this is another missed opportunity with these came out recently the georgetown um jordan ones but if they can bring them back to actually look to spec like the ogs i think they'll make yeah like this this is the one there we go that was the one so that i remember there was a time when this was one of the most popular shoes in the scene for every reason the um nike air jordan 5 85 neutral gray okay that's the one neutral gray 85s those are really popular so they can make them with this sort of shape right and it's not just it's not just a yellowing on the midsole one it's actually a shoe that's been deconstructed and made to exact measurements i'll be over the moon i really would be and it would be go a long way to kind of justifying all the unnecessary i think um loyalty that sneakerheads have with nike because i feel like over the years they don't service us well man just think of the amount of new shapes and silhouettes and textures and tones and whatnot we've been subjected to with yeezy like them or not but they're interesting shoes regardless of them whether it's the you know the yeezy this is it was about the yeezy moon boots well i don't know what the name of them is the one that came out recently the brown ones i wanted right those ones like you might not like what they look like and you might not think it where it's gonna, it's gonna go well with what you wear day to day but there's no denying there's no one else out there making the shoe that looks like that do you know what I mean it's completely unique everything about it it, it asks you interesting questions it and Barry's outfit is fucking garbage here but even this boot this 1950 whatever just interesting shapes I feel like Nike don't do it they don't push it that far enough when it comes to sneakers it's just always the same bloody garbage again and again and again i'm just tired of it to be honest overall um i feel like they kind of get too much grace given to them because again because of all the legendary shoes that they've made over the years that people have kind of you know attached their entire identities to or formed a big part of their lives and i think overall they're pretty terrible in terms of their shoes and retro that in terms of the shoes they're making in general there's no really original thought being put there even this new news i said all this energy they're putting into you know reintroducing a reimagined what well, is this called you know, a, a a vintage chicago jordan one with vintage treatment that could be actually putting r and d an actual new model of a shoe and maybe competing with easy because it feels like in terms of an innovation they've not been doing much and then you've got all these other luxury brands out there making some really cool shoes look at what matthew williams is doing at Givenchy, for instance like him or not he's posing interesting questions offering different alternatives fresh new takes and stuff and people are kind of gravitating towards that because there's only so many Air Max ones one man can have. There's only so many Jordan one Chicago's one man can have too. Like, please be more interesting and make new stuff. Again, if you don't want to make new stuff, cool. At least then give us what we want. Don't give us a... What's a bad retro that I hate? Yeah, Nike Air Stab. That's a good one. Nike Air Stab. This is one of the horriblest retros ever made, in my opinion. Like, the shape-wise, terrible compared to the actual OG 
look at that thing look at that right you look at that and then you say the vintage you say oh, actually there's nothing wrong with that one there look at how different and how better that shape looks compared to the vintage even that the foot patrol colorway which is a classic colorway back in 05 if that was actually applied to an actual you know uh perfectly made retro it would have been 10 times better of a shoe do you know what i mean like that shoe there like come on man like just put that color away on that crazy like that's what that's what the vintage one looks like right the vintage air stab so so i don't know i don't really have much faith in nike when it comes to retros because they always fuck things up but if they're willing to kind of make a change now going forward with the jordans fair enough but i do feel like they're taking the piss out of sneakerheads myself included when it comes to these things but you know what do i know in that regard